what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my spoiler free review for don't breathe 2 don't breathe 2 is the follow-up to the 2016 um hit, surprise hit in my opinion don't breathe that was written and directed by fide alvarez fide alvarez returns to co-write the script along with the person who's helming the film this time around roto sayegas i believe is how you pronounce his name he's directing the movie while also co-writing it along with fide alvarez who just simply returned to help with the script now Stephen lang returns we have brendan sack brendan sexton we have madeline grace and we have adam young we have bobby Schofield, rocky williams or roshi williams stephen rodri stephanie arcilla so now that i'm done butchering all those names <laughs> and don't breathe too we're following up with norman nordstrom who is stephen lang's character that, who, his name just to start off with no one uses this name in the movie he is basically put in this position where now we're picking up with him there's no resolution to what happened at the end of the first film i still do not understand how no one found the body of that girl that he had used that turkey baster on at the end of the first film i, I don't understand that he's now in this hero in this hero like role more or less as a as a hero in the long run i'll get to that in a second in this narrative where he has this young girl named phoenix who he rescued from a a fire and then all of a sudden he he has this mission to go out and kill these people that have come to now take the girl from him we know in the original film he was he was dealing with a lot of uh depression as it pertains to him losing his daughter and we know that led to him doing a lot of nasty disgusting things that he really did not get justice for in terms of you know going to jail etc etc not to say that he not to say that rocky and her crew were all that innocent at all but i feel like the issue mostly i have with don't breathe too is how this screenplay it kind of is severely disjointed and what i mean by that is there was already concerns about him being the hero going into this and i don't think the major intent here was to tell a hero story but it's just the biggest issue that comes with don't breathe 2 is how there is literally no one you will want to root for outside of this innocent girl phoenix who is caught in the in the middle of two different parties of people who ultimately are terrible and when i say terrible i'm just saying the way they're presented on screen everything about them it's terrible the blind man norman we know that he has his demons and that he had something terrible happen to him but he's let his demons now take him on this completely different route in life where he's not easy to get behind you don't feel attached to him at all whatsoever in terms of wanting to see him succeed in what he's doing don't breathe too is just a good entertaining action thriller full of a lot of gore it exists for no reason for the most part honestly and this is coming from someone who thought that this movie would justify its existence and it does not do that it does not do that at all whatsoever this direction with this character it's pretty much telling a story of a broken man who knows he isn't a hero you're not expected to see him as a hero and he's kind of just doing a good deed for a innocent child for eight years i'll just say eight years because eight years is a thing brought up <laughs> early on in the film he's been doing a good deed for a little girl eight years for eight years and he can he finishes his good deeds by saving her from a group of terrible people that are equally as terrible as he is as far as i'm concerned they what you find out about these people because there's a lot of twist a lot of twist and this goes back to the whole writing the writing issue when these people break into his house norman's house and we get to the moment of what they're doing and why they have an interest in this girl you're like oh okay so they they really are saving her and then you come to find out something else about them and you're like wait what so it's like there's there's no heroes here you just have this innocent girl who is caught in between two parties of people who honestly she she doesn't need anything to do with either party she needs to get away from norman and she needs to get away from these people who do end up having a motive behind what they're doing as it pertains to why they come after norman and it's honestly one of the most obvious things that i feel like a lot of us overlooked 
trying to identify and put together this narrative in ways that we could connect it to Rocky or tie it into the first film in any way. This the answer that you get for what they're doing. I, I feel like a lot of you, if you're like me, who overlooked this obvious detail, you're going to probably be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But then there's something else that happens that you're like, oh, so you actually aren't heroes. They they literally are paper thin. You don't learn anything about them outside of just what their roles are as it pertains to the character of Phoenix. The performances, I'm going to say Stephen Lang and Madeline Grace, they're the best. They're the best. Everyone else, hollow, very flat. Stephen Lang isn't even giving his all here as a as compared to the original. I feel like the direction this time around was in this in the sense that there's there's not as much tension, but there are some tense scenes. There's a moment where Phoenix is trapped in this container of water. I'll just say and it's rising to the top all the while she has like this electrical wire and you're going to be, of course, on the edge hoping she gets out of this situation without getting electrocuted with all this water rising to the top of this wire that sits above it. There's definitely a lot more gore here this time around. And again, I think Stephen Lang, he does a great job here as Norman, but it's just not on the same level as it was with the first movie. And Madeline Grace here is Phoenix. You just give there's just so much that I guess this, this is like the, the biggest pro to the script. It does enough to make Madeline like such an innocent victim in all of this that you as the audience will grow attached to her and you get the ending that you should get out of a narrative like this. This little girl does not deserve any of this. Neither one of these party of people deserve to have them or deserve to have her in her life. You hope that something else happens positively for her as it pertains to how the film ends. I don't know how they could even go in another direction in terms of continuing the narrative for Don't Breathe 3. I've seen them already talking about that, getting Jane Levy back too, potentially. I don't know what there's going to happen, what how that's going to even work. Unless there was a post credit scene I missed. I think that the cinematography in this movie also is not that great, but there's a lot of different things that I have a problem with as it pertains to Don't Breathe 2. Did I like it? Not really. I honestly would give this a five and a half out of 10, but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications to miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.